Welcome to Paradise in the Pines, a podcast about the people, places, and stories that make this the home of American golf. Brought to you by the Pinehurst Southern Pines Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And welcome to Paradise in the Pines. I'm Phil Wurz with the Convention and Visitors Bureau for the Pioneer Southern Pines in Aberdeen area. Joined today by Kelly Miller, uh, a gentleman in around these parts needs no introduction, but I'll provide one, Kelly. You're the president of Pine Needles Lodge and Golf Club, Mid Pines Inn and Golf Club, and Southern Pines Golf Club. So welcome to Paradise in the Pines, Kelly. I'm thrilled to be here at Paradise with you. Well, thanks, Kelly. Uh, you know, it's interesting just doing some background with you. And and it's interesting because this definitely shows that you can definitely do anything you want in life. When you came to Pine Needles, you started as a front desk clerk, I understand. Yeah. And, uh, and now as president, uh, what a great ride it has been over, what, some 50 plus years? Yeah, it's uh, it's been an amazing ride. Um, golf has uh, uh, really been kind of at the root of everything I've done in my life, my kids, mm -hmm. uh, my family. Uh, so uh, very fortunate and blessed uh, to to be able to wake up every day. And uh, I, I really shouldn't even call it work. I go yeah. down there and, uh, and greet people, gather with them, and uh, help them enjoy uh, a vacation or whatever it may be, a dinner, a lunch, uh, a beverage perhaps. But it's uh, been a great ride for me. You know, when, when people talk about pine needles, I think a lot of people think about Peggy Kirk Bell, uh, you know, passed away a couple of years ago and, you know, was honored to be in the, the Golf Hall of Fame. And what was it like to go down there and kind of remember her, uh, the matriarch of this tremendous resort that everybody around the country, around the world knows and, and knows this grand lady so well? Yeah, what what a special lady. Uh, I mean, I feel so blessed to be able to uh, call her Ma Bell. That's yeah. what most people called her because... Pine Needles, that was her home, not, not, not her home at her home. Pine Needles was her home, and she was uh, an, an unbelievable giver. Um, she was a great teacher, um, but she taught more than, than golf. She taught about life's lessons, uh, so inspirational, so genuine. I never met anybody that didn't like Peggy Bell. Yeah. Uh, she was just uh, uh, certainly one of a kind and thrilled that she got into the Hall of Fame. Wish she would have been around to see that because uh, mm -hmm. I, I feel she certainly deserved it. But uh, a fitting tribute uh, to a real pioneer in the game of golf. Uh, also a pioneer, uh, a businesswoman. You know, that that just didn't happen back there in 1951. Yeah, for sure. You know, that was, uh, you know, the story about Mr. Bell just uh, a gal came in and wanted to get a lesson, and he said to Peg, you go teach her. And she says, Bullet, I don't know how to teach. And he says, well, you know more than she does, so go tell her something. So, uh, And it started a, an unbelievable career, unbelievable uh, uh, journey for the, for the Bell family, and uh, I consider myself, as I said, very fortunate to have been a small part of it. You know, what, and what people will find when they, they talk about Pine Needles and Miss Bell and how much she liked, loved to teach, uh, and now you have Donna Andrews there who played at University of North Carolina and, and has an accomplished career as well and a great teacher there. But uh, you do things there at Pine Needles called Gafari, which came from from Miss Bell. And how, how did she get that started? And and, uh, and still to this day is something that you guys really hang your hat on. Yeah, we do. Uh, the pioneers in women's golf instruction, it was kind of women teaching women, which was unheard of, mm -hmm. you know, 50 some years ago as it related to that. And it all started, uh, Mr. Bell had a group coming into the uh, hotel right there and they canceled. And uh, of course, you know, th this was, they were just getting going uh, early in their business. And he said, I don't know what we're going to do. So Mrs. Bell, along with Ellen Griffin, who uh, was a pioneer in ladies golf instruction, they just went out and Xerox, the old days, you know, printing yeah. out things and did a bunch of flyers to invite gals to come and, you know, for instruction. And that literally is, is how it happened. And, you know, now 50 plus years later and thousands upon thousands of students later, uh, it, it's still here. We're thrilled with carrying on the tradition and obviously with Donna Andrews, uh, of course, Pat McGowan, uh, Bonnie McGowan yeah. teaches as well. My wife, Peggy Ann, teaches. So it's still kind of a family shop as it relates to the golf schools. Now you talk about Peggy Ann, uh, your lovely wife. Uh, you guys met a long time ago uh, at the University of Alabama where you played there, and she played as well. Yeah, she played on the team in Alabama. That's where we met. And, 
quite a journey uh, from then. So uh, it was a great time. We were the, back there uh, playing on the, the men's and the ladies' team. And, uh, of course, Coach Bryant was there uh, at the time. So at Bama, we won two national championships when we were there. So it was a great uh, great ride at Alabama and then getting out and coming, coming here to try it and see if we liked it or not. Uh, I, I guess – <laughs> plus years later, we're, right. we're still here. So talk about when you came here. I mean, when you came to Pine Needles, what was this place like, this destination? I mean, you know, obviously Pinehurst was there, Pine Needles was here, but what was it like when you first set, set foot in this destination uh, compared to what it is today? What was it like? Yeah, well, I can remember fairly vividly coming to, to, to the Southern Pines, Pine Needles, uh, the first time and getting off. Uh, of course, then we came from uh, over from Alabama, came up number one and turned on the Midland Road, and I, I thought that was the most majestic road I'd ever seen, you know, and yeah. let alone here's their business right there, and then just driving in and, and seeing it. Pretty remarkable, uh, you know, for me. And so uh, at the time, not as many other golf courses and, and resorts. You had Pine Needles, uh, Mid Pines, mm-hmm. uh, obviously Pinehurst. And, you know, the Pinecrest Inn, and there was a, the Sheraton, uh, which yeah. is now, uh, I think it's a Days Inn now. So there was a few hotels, an old Holiday Inn and a Charlton Motel. Um, and so uh, just a lot different back then, but it was still great fun. Um, and uh, my introduction really to Mr. and Mrs. Bell was uh, when I, uh, at, at the end of the day, um, five o'clock or whatever it was, everybody just kind of gathered down on the first tee. You know, there might be four, there might be eight, and everybody just teed off together, yeah. you know. And I remember we were all back there, and then Mrs. Bell uh, came, and she came to the back tees where we were all teeing off. And, of course, uh, trying to do the math, she was probably 62 at the time. Uh, and I'm thinking, geez, what's this, this lady coming back here for us? And then, of course, Bullet says, Peg, ladies first. And so – she hits this drive out there on the first hole, and I'm just kind of staring at it. Like, <laughs> I'm going to have to hit it pretty darn good <laughs> to catch her. Uh, and so uh, that was kind of the beginning of it. But uh, uh, they, they just mel- made everybody feel like uh, like family. Then the years pass, and, and ultimately the club gets its first U.S. Women's Open. Right. Uh, you know, how unbelievable to have Anna, Annika Sorenstam win that, to really put not so much on the map, but really to kind of – as Mike Davis said when he announced uh, that there was another women's open coming, that you know this is a place that crowns true champions because you had Aaron, Annika Sorenstam, and then in subsequent years Kari Webb and Christy Kerr. Uh, you know, this is a place where champions are crowned. How important is U.S. Women's Opens to Pine Needles? Oh, it's very important. Uh, we're we're thrilled uh, hosting these championships. Uh, just a little backdrop uh, when. Uh, we were talking about it that we were actually hosting a woman's senior amateur and Judy Bell and Mrs. Bell, great friends. They mm-hmm. called themselves sisters, but they weren't related. And Peg in her uh, very candid way said, Judy, she said, we've, uh, we've had the kids here. We had the girls junior. And yeah. she says, now we've had these old broads here. She said, when are we going to get some pros here? And Judy <laughs> says, y- you want the pros here? And she said, you bet. She goes, well, if you want the open, you've got it, Peg. And that's it wow. kind of started like that. And Judy ended up faxing me down. This is back in the old days, a thermal paper. I, w- I wish I had because huh. it all vanished, yeah. you know, from all that information. But it started with there and then uh, a great relationship with the USGA. But I, to their credit, you know, the USGA is about uh, identifying champions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and they, all, they go to uh, places that identify great champions. And we feel very fortunate that, um, you know, starting out with Annika, then Kari, and then, uh, of course, Christy. Um, and then Helen Alfredson, you know, one of the mm-hmm. greatest yeah. players uh, uh, in, in the game, uh, wins the senior. Uh, that was just a couple of years yeah, ago. in 2019. So uh, really excited about it. I think the gals will find a little bit different test. Uh, you know, they were playing off ryegrass uh, previously, mm-hmm. and, and since the restoration that Kyle France did uh, in 2017 at Pine Needles, a little bit different golf course. So uh, uh, I'm excited to see them and uh, really excited to – Really, that Annika won the the senior women's amateur, so uh, she's technically eligible to right. come, and uh, and we hope uh, we hope Annika uh, comes home. Well, I know as of this taping, she is not officially registered, but we certainly hope she will come. I, I would. Can you imagine if she were to come back and win twenty six years later after she won the women's open? What kind? 
that would just blow the golf world away, I would think. It sure would. But, you know, just look at what she did and basically not even playing and then just tunes up yeah. for one tournament and wins it kind of comfortably. So great players are, are great no matter what era th that they're in. Um, but she'll uh, – I, I really do. I sincerely hope she uh, – comes back and uh, and gives people a chance to see. What she will sell you. a lot of tickets, I can tell you that. Yeah. There'll be a lot of people who want to follow her for sure. Yeah, I'll buy one. <laughs> right. And people might forget, I mean, the last women's open played here was at number two with Michelle Wee winning. So it's been since 2007. You mentioned the, the right. senior open, um, how much the courses change, and you talk about Kyle France. I mean, I remember you saying a few months ago, Kyle was already starting to work on the setup for the U.S. Women's Open for next year. So what is he kind of doing to kind of tweak the course right now? Yeah, well, we were meeting with the USGA. They wanted to, uh, Shannon Ruliard, who uh, heads up the, uh, the championship for the USGA. And so uh, when we were walking the golf course, and that's really what you do, you go out and walk. Of course, right. she's uh, Shannon saw the woman senior uh, open mm -hmm. champion, so saw where they hit it, and then of course you got to just uh, make some adaptations so that you're envisioning where the gals hit it. So they wanted to to narrow some of the landing areas um, and perhaps with rough. And so what we did in consultation with the USGA, that we actually narrowed the landing areas, but we did it with more sandscape yeah. uh, so that it's a, a little bit tighter. So mm -hmm. it really, and then uh, just adding some tees really just to provide flexibility for them. And also uh, to Kyle's credit, he's a, uh, a big believer in trying to get the course uh to where Ross wanted you to hit it and right. hit the proper irons that he wanted you mm -hmm. to hit it. So with pine needles, as if, for instance, uh, a really cool, gently rolling landscape there, he wanted you to hit it to the top of the hills. Uh, and right. so that really is, uh, it was in mind when we were creating these tees, whether they be more forward or further back uh, on some particular holes. So I, I think that we added four or five different tees as it relates, it narrowed uh, the, the landing areas. And uh, it definitely, I know personally for me, uh, it definitely t toughened it up. It, it is a really fun golf course. If you're out there listening or watching, have not played Pine Needles, it is a fabulous Donna Ross golf course and talk about Kyle France. I mean, he is a great friend of yours. He is a great friend of Pine. He is a great friend of the destination. He has done so many great things. And we'll talk about Southern Pines Golf Club in a minute. But I mean, you know, what has he meant to you and to your ownership group to, to have him do what he's done well, for these courses? It, it's phenomenal what he did. The, the restoration that he did in 2013 uh, at Mid Pines was uh, was really transformational. Mm -hmm. uh, similar to Southern Pines, which we'll talk about later. Mid Pines, it was a great, great golf course, but it, it had just kind of, it was just kind of there, yeah. you know. And when Kyle, I met Kyle at a, uh, a a group called the Outpost Club. I met him at a cocktail party when he was mm. working on Pinehurst Number Two, and he said to me, he said, "If you ever." redo mid pines i'd really like to talk to you and i said sure and uh i was just converting the greens uh that that was my plan yeah. and kyle got wind of it and uh said would would you walk the course with me for two days one afternoon and one morning huh. and i said sure kyle so i learned in that one afternoon and one morning i, I learned more about donald ross than i ever dreamed wow. of learning i mean i was so impressed uh with, with the young man and uh you know his uh, the experience that he had, and mo more importantly, the passion th yeah. that he had. And so, uh, you know, I said, "Look, you're hired. What do you charge?" And he <laughs> said, "Well, I, I didn't think I'd get the job, but he said, I, he said, I'll uh, we'll work together." And I said, "Kyle, we'll make this work." And I went and met with Gil Hance, who Kyle had worked for, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I said, "Is he ready?" And Gil, uh, to Gil's credit. You know, he said, look, if you hired me, he says, all I do is send that kid down there. He yeah. said, give him a chance. Huh. And from there on, it, he was off and running. And we, the first hole we did uh, was the 16th hole at Mid Pines. And, uh, you know, I was a little anxious, you know, as it yeah. relates to that. But when he got down with that 16th hole, I, I was like, geez, the rest of this course, the rest of the course looks terrible. So I was really excited for him to, to finish up. And it's. And if, if people that don't know the 16 hole, it's a, it's a long par four, a little dog leg left. Yeah, par four, dog leg left, got great uh, elevation mm -hmm. to the tee. So you look out there and you see a lot of uh, you see a lot of golf. And so what Kyle was able to do, we took out a lot of trees, raised the canopy, and now you see so much golf uh, over at Mid Pines that it's a it's a spectacular setting, spectacular golf course. 
tremendous des- design integrity and strategy with Ross. Cause, but no a lot question. of people don't really realize that Ross was a great player. You know, he won the North South and, mm-hmm. and, and et cetera. So he, you know, so over there, there's, you know, you're standing left to right, but the ho- calls for a draw to go into it. Well, that's a hard shot, you know, but now for the average guy, it's okay. And, you know, there, there's no real death or glory shots. I put it in the bunker part. on the left side. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying, it, you know, guy, you're not going to lose a bunch of balls right. or anything like that. And you got to go out there and, but up for, it's fun for the average golfer. And I think it's a challenge for, for good players. And I think, that's the making of a great architect, and that's why I think Ross uh, is the best. And I also think it's uh, the key to the success that our properties have had is that it's it's fun for the average p- people and, and a challenge for, for better players. While well, you're mentioning Mid Pines, I mean, the celebrating its 100th anniversary. How and, uh, you know, isn't that amazing? I mean, d- and just just talk about the legacy of Mid Pines, the 100 yeah. years. What do, you, what do you remember? What what should people take away when they come play that course and, and visit and kind of sop in that history? Yeah. Well, there's just it, the place just kind of oozes with history mm-hmm. uh, as it relates to that. And really, uh, it probably had more of a history than even Pine Needles did, uh, just because uh, Julius Boris was the, right. the head pro there, played out of there. He'd have his buddies come. So, you know, Sneed, Hogan. Julius, the whole deal. I mean, it was, it was kind of a place for, it was a happening place. Yeah. And so uh, it, it's exciting. It's a hundred years, a little unfortunate with COVID. We weren't able to properly mm-hmm. uh, celebrate it because nobody knew the rules and this and that and what was going to happen, but uh, majestic old place um, that, that will be, uh, as it relates to the, the, the hotel and some of the room properties will be. And we're looking uh, at the right back of the hotel. Yeah, I mean, what yeah, a be- when you're walking uh, up 18 and you see that clubhouse, it, it is unmistakable. You know, it's a great view, whether you're sitting out on that back patio by the fire pits yep. looking out, or if you're coming down and playing the 18th hole and looking back and seeing that backdrop. It's uh, a really spectacular place and uh, one of the great places in golf. You mentioned Julius Boris. you got to have a favorite uh, Julius Boris story. You know, I just, uh, uh, I was reading with the Ryder Cup coming. I, I never met Julius. I knew uh, his nephew who was the pro there. And so uh, uh, with all the Ryder Cup stuff that was going on this year, and, and there was a quote from Hogan, and he was a captain of the team. Mm. And, you know, he was, uh, he had a couple of quotes and he said, you know, one of them was, he said, look, we've got these uniforms. He says, I, I don't give a damn what you, if you guys wear these or not. He, you know, he said uh, to Doug Sanders, he says, if you want to dress like a peacock, dress like a peacock, I don't really care. He said, I never played, played well in another man's clothes. And he said, the other thing, he said, the first guy I'm going to give, uh, the first guy that's going to hit a shot for us is Julius Boris. Cause he doesn't give a damn about it. <laughs> so, uh, he, you know, easy going, free flowing. Uh, I wish I would have had an opportunity to meet him. Cause that's a, it's a throwback to a different era. Yeah. You know, there's a great photo in the hallway at, uh, uh, at Mid Pines, and Julius is there. He's got an alpaca sweater, looks good. He's got this cigarette dangling. He's at the top of his backswing. And, you know, <laughs> classic. And he was playing it off. You yeah, know, in a tournament. That's just the, the way that they did it back then. That's cool that he was represented by Mid Pines because yeah. guys back then they were represented by clubs because they had to make extra money. They didn't make the millions of dollars they yeah, make today. No, that's correct. You know, everybody had a place that they played out. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I think it was. Uh, Oh, well, Byron Nelson, I think he played out of Inverness uh, up in Ohio and Toledo. You know, so all these guys, they played out of somewhere. And that's what was one of the ways that they made money. Now, you play at a Pine Needles, but you also play at a Seminole. You won a tournament at Seminole back in the day. Yeah, I was. Uh, there was a Coleman that I won a, a number of years ago, which was a- amateurs from all over the uh, country coming uh, and playing there. And that was a great thrill uh, for me. And then, uh, and then to see the Walker Cup being played there, that was yeah, pretty cool. It was fantastic. I mean, uh, we just got a, a new superintendent there, Nelson. Caron, who did a fabulous job at uh, getting it into shape. And then we had a, it was magnificent weather just enough wind to make it challenging but yet fun and uh another kind of victim of covid because it it we were only uh, only members could go out there uh, Mm. and watch it so it would have been kind of neat for others to come and see and experience Seminole because a lot of people don't get an opportunity to but uh, i think people saw it on tv and and uh, got a chance to see the breathtaking beauty of it well they're going to get a chance to see uh pine needles lodge and golf club on tv the 2022 U.S. Women's Open in a few months. Um, 
I won't pin you down on who you think might win. I mean, obviously, Nellie Quarter's number one in the world. Uh, Lexi Thompson comes back where she played her very first major. Fifth, can't believe she's played in 50 yeah. majors. Uh, yeah, and she's 26 years old or 27, something like that. But, you know, who who do you think or what kind of game is going to be f- favored to um, – possibly take home that trophy? Well, um, I would assume based on the history of it, they, uh, one of the top players is going to win this yeah. championship. But, you know, going back to it, uh, obviously, Annika was number one in the world. Mm-hmm. Kari was number one in the world. Uh, Christy, while not number one in the world, the, the gal that was leading it was number one in the world was Lorena Ochoa. She yeah. doubled the 17th hole. Uh, now, Christy's a great champion, but also would have been three – uh, number one in the world that, that had won at our place. So I'd, I'd hover near the top uh, as it relates to that. I was obviously pulled in for Lexi uh, at last year's Open to be the defending champ, um, but uh, got a young international star. Uh, that is, yeah. uh, it will be exciting for golf. Nellie Corda, obviously a great player. Uh, Lydia Ko. Um, Somebody's got to be thinking around here because the uh, uh, the way that co- the course is going to be set up, it's it's almost like a, a 180 uh, of what they had last year at San Francisco mm. because the rough there was very, very yeah. penal. Um, we virtually have no rough, mm-hmm. but what's going to matter is coming in from the proper – the proper shot and the proper angle. Right. I mean, so you you look out there and you'll say, well, the, the fairway is really wide. Well, it's really not if you're going to get to the hole, mm-hmm. uh, wherever the hole location is cut. So uh, I, I think it'll be somebody that's obviously very talented, but also uh, uh, good with the strategy. And in, in the end, it's who makes the putts. You know, that's just that's, you, know, you, that's know, you true. play the game. Yeah. You know, if you no make question. those five and six footers, it's easier. Is there a score that you're thinking might win one under, two under, maybe? Yeah, I, I would think. I don't think it'll be real low. Uh, again, just this, uh, some of it depends on the course setup and the weather. You mm-hmm. know, if it gets soft. I mean, the courses here in the Piners area don't generally get soft just because of the uh, the sand, right? And, and everything that's here. Uh, I, I'd be surprised if anything lower than five under, but mm-hmm. and I could see two, three under winning it. And uh, I know if I, I'm assuming if I were on that one. And somebody said, you can sit here at three under. I bet they'd take it. Yeah, no question. And you can purchase tickets at UN's, uswomensopen.com. Yeah. Um, why should people purchase tickets and come to the Pine or Southern Pines Aberdeen area to, to witness this championship in person? Well, I think it, it doesn't matter what uh, event you're looking at. Whenever you can go and see the greatest players, you know, at whatever it is, whether mm-hmm. it's golf, tennis, football, yeah. whatever, Come see the greatest players in the world. And so I, I think that is uh, the, the one reason to come. Uh, the other reason, the, the gals are, are, are so fun, so approachable. And I think they also play a game far more similar to what we play. Yeah. Uh, you know, and True. just in terms now that they're longer than me, you know, as it relates <laughs> to that. But, you know, it's not 330 and 350 yeah. uh, long. So it's and the clubs, you know, look at the clubs that they're using, look at the hybrids they have in their bag and, and et cetera. Look at how they strategize on the golf course and see how they move their way around. And then just come enjoy the, the experience. Uh, the staff, uh, Reg and Allison, have done a great job of trying to you know, make it a really kind of a home event because, you know, they are home uh, yeah. in terms of them living here right. and also running the championship. So uh, a home event, have some other fun things outside of the championships. I know they're doing something on uh, on first Friday there. They're also going to do another mm-hmm. event on Saturday yeah. night. So uh, to do things outside the championship as well. So, you know, come here, stay, uh, enjoy the championship, even play, you know, go out and play one morning at one of the golf courses or come out and watch and then play in the afternoon. So there's uh, there's a, a lot to do uh, when you come to a championship here in the Sandhills. I was going to say, bring your clubs because uh, Southern Pines Golf Club is going to be open, I would imagine. Yes. Get your tee times now because this place is on fire. I mean, you and your business partner purchased that property. You had your eyes on that thing for years because you love that place. Uh, the transformation of that golf course me having not played it, but maybe a couple times when I first moved here four years ago, but to having played it with guys that have played it hundreds of times, they were blown away. Just talk about the transformation of that golf course and, and what Kyle was able to do with that. Yeah. Uh, well, you're right. I, when I first came to the air, I played a lot of golf over there at Southern Pines. So yeah. I was, I've was i always been a huge fan of it. I played a fair amount over there with my father-in-law. We used to Andy Pro and Andy Page was the pro over there. There were some guys, Tip Eddie, Ben Eddie. 
uh, Barry Mady, uh, Harvey Ward. There was a group wow. of 12 to 16, yeah. and, you know, we just went around and played various courses. Ma- mainly it was Southern Pines, Pine Needles, Whispering Pines, and Foxfire, because Harvey mm. was, yeah. was out at Foxfire. And uh, we would play those. So I've always had a love uh, for Southern Pines, a tremendous uh, topography over there. And then... Uh, you know, Kyle and I have been talking over the last few years. We've had I've had several starts and stops uh, o- over there, mm-hmm. and then fortunately, when this uh, when this happened, uh, we were we were ready to go. And and Kyle really has done uh, a fantastic job, along with our superintendent Dave Frichty, uh, Cody, uh, our, our superintendent over there. It, the place looks fantastic, and it and I tell people it, it gets better every day. Yeah. you know, as it matures and. Somebody once asked me, they said, uh, well, when are you going to get done with it? And I said, well, the honest answer is never. Yeah. You know, because you constantly it evolves. work on yeah. it. I mean, we're, same thing. We're working on mid pines. We're working on pine needles. But the the Southern Pines uh, property is, uh, again, the topography, the, the par threes over there. And we still got a lot of work ahead of us. We uh, got some cart path work that we're uh, trying to finish out. And then there's still some trees that we need to get removed. And we want to raise the canopy so you can see through the golf course uh, a little bit better. Because yeah. there's some fantastic vistas. Like, you know, standing out in the fairway now, in the middle of the fairway on number eight. And you look around and you just see all that great golf uh, that's there. And there's a power line that we're trying to either r- remove or uh, or Barry, uh, that'll e- e- open it up even more. So, uh, that standing, whether you're on eight, eight fairway or 11 green, you'll look around and see six to eight holes. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Now you mentioned oh. trees. We're not talking about a couple dozen. We're talking hundreds of trees. I mean, the vistas now, cause the gentleman I played with, like you couldn't see over to that fairway. Yeah. And now you can see two or three over. Well, you know, the, it was really, um, I, I say it was centuries of tree. I mean, when I, uh, you know, probably hadn't had any, not centuries, but uh, decades of trees mm-hmm. that uh, hadn't been removed. And it really just kind of encroached on the golf course. So, and it was hard to grow grass where it is. So some of it was done just to be able to, to grow grass where we wanted to grow grass. Others were done for strategy that, you know, little nooks and crannies that, uh, that Kyle knew what Ross had done and how it made the hole better and, and the strategy that was involved with it. So, um, again, opening it uh, a lot more open than, than it had been in the past, uh, the tree removal. And so, uh, uh, you know, a little bit about the lost hole. I don't know if yeah. you wanted to chat about that. Sure. There was a hole, you know, this course was started in 1906. Ross got involved in our, uh, around 1911. And so, uh, uh, one goes out and 18 comes back mm-hmm. in. So this is long before golf carts. So uh, he he ended up putting a, he called it a connector hole. You play one, two, three, four, and he put a little par three in and it connected it. And then you'd play that par three and then 15 through 18. Yeah. On it. And she so could play a little nine hole loop. And so when we saw it on the old aerials, you know, the old black and white, yeah. um, and we said, look, we need to put this thing back. And it's not exactly where it was uh, when Ross put it, just because Ross had put an additional T in at some point. But there was there was a setting there that was just built for golf. It's I a mean, beautiful par three. It's not a throwaway hole. It is a spectacular it, it par is, three. It's a spectacular little par three. And so, uh, you know, you can play that hole. It's also uh, – and then – We'll finish it off this winter. One of the cool things I said to Kyle, I said, have you ever built a sand green? He says, <laughs> right. no. And I said, well, you're going to build one. And so uh, we're actually going to have two whole locations out there. We'll have one for a sand green and one for the regular green. And so you can play that, you know, after you play the fourth. Uh, and if you're cutting on over and coming on in, assuming there's nobody in on the play in number 14, you can play a nine-hole loop. Or you, some people, I think, have played the, uh, uh, we call it the lost hole. I'll play one, two, three, four, pl- hit a tee shot to the lost hole, and then hit their tee ball on number five yeah. and then go putt out and then continue on with number uh, number five. So great little hole, uh, great story, and uh, uh, been been fun to do, real fun. And St. Greens, I mean, that was back in the day, that was Typical of, of the area at that time. Yeah, all, all these golf, I mean, all, all the original Pioneers courses, and of course, Pine Needles, Mid Pines, uh, Southern Pines, they were, they were all sand greens. And, uh, you know, mo- most of them were converted to Bermuda in, uh, in the early 30s. Yeah, and, you know, when you talk about if you're going to come down to the area and play some golf, I mean, you're talking about three golf courses now in your portfolio, Pine Needles, Mid Pines, Southern Pines Golf Club. You're right up there and I've heard this from many people, with two, four, and eight. I mean, if you were going to pick three courses of any ilk, um, 
you're right up there now. What, what does it mean to really have like a triumvirate now that you can really go out there and say, these are three of the best courses in the Sand Hills period? Yeah, well, we're really proud of that. Um, as I said, I've been looking at Southern Pines for a long time because I, I knew that the potential that, that was there. So for us to have three, you know, some people, it's funny, some people say, well, I really like pine needles. Others say, oh, no, no, mid pines is the best. And then now pe people are saying, oh, no, that's Southern Pines. It's the best one of all. And my aunt, they, people ask me, I said, I like, it's like kids. I like all three. Of them. <laughs> right. I love all three. Well, people may or may not know, uh, Kelly, you're a member of the board of directors for the Convention of Visitors Bureau, this destination, uh, which has grown so much, the home of American golf. Um, if you were to recommend somebody come down, maybe has never been to the Sand Hills, wants to come to the Women's Open, uh, they're going to come to the championship. But, you know, what would you recommend if it was a perfect weekend to come down here? What would you do? What would you go see? Where would you go dine? Just some recommendations, some of your favorites here. Jeez, there's all kinds of stuff to do. But the neat thing about this destination really is uh, there's a lot to do after you get done playing golf. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a vibrant community. I was, uh, I was with Mike Kaiser. He came and played uh, owner of uh, Band of Dunes, uh, you know, out there. And he played uh, Southern Pines a year ago. Yeah. And then he just played it uh, last week. And uh, he was very impressed with it and very complimentary. And uh and he was talking about what it, how neat it was to have a community around it because uh, out there that's yeah. you're there and that's you're it. going to Bandit. Yeah. And he said it's really cool that you've got this community here. So and stream song would be the same kind of yeah. kind of example too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's uh, such vibrancy in there. You come, you can play golf. There's all different uh, all different levels of golf that you can play here. So you can pick and choose mm -hmm. whether that you're choosing that on price or whether you're choosing that on history or championship or whatever. All kinds of golf, you know, that you can play. All diff all kinds of different accommodations you can stay. At. You can stay at one of the resorts. You can stay at an inn. You can stay at a bed and breakfast. Right. You know, all kinds of really good things, and then uh, uh, enjoy some of the the, the great restaurants uh, that are here, whether that be in downtown uh, Southern Pines or in uh, Pinehurst, the village of Pinehurst. Um, great restaurants. Uh, uh, you know, I love. Uh, there's. All kinds of them, uh, I guess, uh, favorites and ones that I go to. I go to Ashton's, I go to 195, I go to Southern Prime, Elliott's, um, Villaggio, great new uh, yeah. Italian right. place right down there in the village. So there's, uh, uh, and, and of course, our places. I didn't want to uh, leave them out, but <laughs> of uh, course. there's lots to do. And then whether you're uh, in downtown Southern Pines, just the ability to go out afterwards and go to a cool place and enjoy some, some music, uh, you know, go to the Jefferson outdoor. They got a cool right. courtyard yeah. area, play some music, the bell trees kind of fun and, uh, um, all kinds of great things to do. And it makes it a, and, and then, then if you're here like on a first Friday or a live after five, just to go into oh, a ton that's of events, Southern yeah. Pines or whether that's in Pinehurst. So, uh, kudos to the community for, you know, getting going and, the other business leaders for focusing on those things and, and making it fun for, uh, uh, they make it fun for the tourists, but it's also real fun for, uh, for the residents here. No question. Well. Yeah. We didn't even mention the breweries or the distillery that's, right. that's coming. Jeez, so I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. I was just at the Piner's <laughs> brewery the other night. So I like, go, uh, I love going to those and, yeah, uh, Micah was the Southern Pines uh, mm -hmm. Brewery. So, uh, yeah, we were one of his first uh, commercial customers. Um, so those guys have done a great job. So, And and lastly, Aaron, we'll start wrapping things up here. Um, with the USGA and their announcement, um, you know, some people think, okay, this this is a benefit to, to Piners because they're bringing all these U.S. Opens. But they've said it's going to be a $2 billion economic impact to the state of North Carolina, obviously a huge impact on the home of American golf and the Piner Southern Pines, Aberdeen area. What does that announcement, the USGA coming here and everything they're going to do going to mean to your business, to your golf courses uh, and, and to your interests in general? Well, it's a uh, phenomenal uh, happenstance for, for our community. Uh, and, uh, Thanks to the uh, the leadership that uh, helped make it happen, whether that be from the county level, the village level, and obviously the state level. I think everybody recognized. And you were part of that whole process too. You were on a committee that yeah. was kind of part of getting that all together. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, it's terrific for our area to, just to have them bring in the golf house too down mm -hmm. here. You know, for uh, the museum, uh, obviously the uh, uh, with the balls and implements. That's a, that's a huge thing for their technology and testing and yep. then the agronomy as it relates to that so all that's uh, fantastic 
but really the, uh, the feather in the cap is is getting the uh, the men's open every basically every five years yeah. and that's the national and international uh, pub- publicity that you you get as a result of that um, you know will be ongoing for you know the rest of certainly right. the rest of my lifetime and and on from there you know this obviously golf's tremendously busy with covid right now and uh, fortunately you know it's i mean who would have ever thought but uh it, it will settle down a, a little bit but uh, to me uh, my viewpoint is you know we're, we are destined for some real good growth over the next 20 to 30 years sure. as a result of having those champions. Not just golf, the entire destination. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all of a sudden somebody sees it on TV or they come here and they mm-hmm. visit and they say, hey, I, I want to be here. So I, I'm very optimistic uh, about uh, our community uh, for, for the future and our state for the future. North Carolina is a, a great place uh, to come to. Obviously, geographically, where we are, mm-hmm. a lot of drive to traffic that we uh, we experienced as a result of COVID. People couldn't get on the planes and go, but they they drove here. So um, it's exciting. You know, the, I was talking with somebody and we talked about the golden era of Pinehurst. And, you know, they think of it back in the 30s or 40s. And really, I, I think this is the golden era yeah. of, of the Pinehurst. What's going on right here, right now with everything that's getting ready to happen. And you saw at CCNC with the, you know, the boys junior. Yeah. And we're having a championship, the, the Pinehurst and all they're going to do. And we're chatting with the USGA about some future championships. So um, it, it's an exciting time to be here in the Sandhills. I was going to ask you that. I mean, we know we have U.S. men's opens through 2047, as you said, every other four or five, six years. Uh, do you anticipate more women's opens? And just for the record, Pine Needles, uh, June 2nd through the 5th, 2022, will host the U.S. Women's Open uh, for the fourth time, more than any other club in the country. Um, obviously, that speaks well for the reputation of Pine Needles. Do you anticipate more dates being named in the future for women's opens? Well, we would love to. We're, the USGA have been uh, great partners of ours, and so uh, we would look forward to working with them for maybe any of the championships that uh, they, they deem that one of our courses might be uh, might be great to have on. So, yeah, exciting times. Well, we look forward to that, but we look forward to the U.S. Women's Open June 2nd through the 5th at Pine Needles Lodge and Golf Club. Kelly Miller, president of Pine Needles Mid Pines and Southern Pines Golf Club. Been a pleasure. We, yeah. we could talk all day. I mean, you're you're a walking encyclopedia for golf, for the destination, and for the game itself. Uh, we appreciate all your contributions, and uh, we look forward to having you on again soon. Well, thanks to, to you and all you do uh, for the CVB and, and for our community. So uh, we're, you've got we've got the right guy at the right time. Well, price at the helm right now. So uh, I also brought you a, a a little hundredth anniversary coin for oh wow for for Mid Pines to to celebrate. So, well, thank uh, you so much. Anyway, uh, enjoy it and uh, keep up the great work here and uh, keep spreading the uh, the gospel of golf here. We will do it, Kelly. Yeah. Kelly Miller again. Thank you so much. You. This has been Paradise in the Pines. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us for Paradise in the Pines. Subscribe with your favorite podcatcher. To see more episodes, go to our YouTube channel at Home of American Golf. For more information or to book your bucket list getaway, visit homeofgolf.com. Thanks for checking us out and see you soon. (laughs) 